Hi, Dominators. It's the mother here. Uh. <laughs> I think also, like, we need to give black parents in particular a bit of grace. Also, you know, our first black president was Yay. like, the key to success Yay. is education. Is the, no, what's the lie? What's la- isn't there another key? <laughs> what's the lie? Isn't sure. there another key to success, like, Banza? What's lie? So, obviously, like, now they have that belief. Yeah. That. Um, okay, so I discovered it in high school. Mm. At first, I thought it was a phase. But, I mean, like, as I grow up, I do look at some girls and I'm just like, Ooh, mm, girl. Oh, you know, I was getting paid for that. Of course. Please. Period. Please. We have to. <laughs> Please. We have hey. to get paid. We are getting yeah. paid, guys. And when I say we're getting paid. We're getting paid. We're getting paid. Money. What's up, everybody? Today, you're tuned in once again with me, your host, Ole Oceans Grey. And today... My guest, I'd like to introduce her with a statement or phrase rather that her supporters like to use. Who is the oh mother? <laughs> her supporters call themselves the dominators because I mean, you guys dominate all the time. It's just win after win after win. She is a TV reality show personality that is and content creator. Oh, and Miss Mamas is educated. Like, don't get us wrong. She is educated. Like, respect, <laughs> respect. So, yeah, today I'd like to welcome my guest, Zintle C. Hi, guys. <laughs> it is your girl, Zintle Z. Period. Thanks for having me, Oli. Thank you for coming. How are you feeling? Um, I'm good. Mm. I'm good. I feel, I feel great. Okay, yeah, that's great. I can't complain. All right. So, today, before we start off with the actual questions and so forth, mm-hmm. I'd like to get into a bit of an icebreaker. Just to make sure that we go, we comfortable, and we're vibing. Okay, so how it's gonna work is I'm gonna ask you a question, yeah. right? And then you'll tell me the age that you did that particular event or whatever. Okay. And then just explain like briefly the experience, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, cool. So the first question is your first kiss. Um, ish, I don't remember the age, but yeah. I was in grade seven. Mm. Um, I started dating this guy, uh, the hottest guy. In my school, actually. Of course. Period. <laughs> and then, but I was scared to kiss him, but our friends kept on forcing us to kiss. Fish, and, 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 and then we finally did it. I was in grade seven. I don't remember. How old was I? 13? Maybe. Yeah, yeah around, around those ages. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's that's crazy. You see, you told me. My friends are also Peer ups. Pressure. In <laughs> my friends are also ups. Ugh. Anyways, <laughs> question number two. Your first date. My first date... I was definitely in varsity first year, mm. which was 2017. Okay. With a guy I didn't even like, but a sequel lap. You're like, actually, you just give him a chance. You see, giving guys a chance that you do, that, that like you more than you like but them. But a sequel lap, but yeah. Okay, cool. And then last question, your first clubbing experience. My first clubbing experience was also in first year, 2017. Mm. I was 20. Was I 20 or 21? I was 20. Yeah. I didn't like it. Um... But as time went on, I actually got used to yeah. it. So yeah. Okay, cool. And then let's get into your background. So I know that you're from, well, you're born in the Eastern Cape, right? Mm-hmm. And then you were bred in KZN. Mm-hmm. How's that transition been for you coming to Johannesburg? You know, it gets a bit crazy. So how's that been? Okay, so that wasn't hard because my mom stays in Johannesburg. So while I was in um, KZN, I used to visit my mom um, every once in a, while, in a while, especially in June holidays and December holidays. So me moving to Johannesburg after matric wasn't really a stretch because I'm used to, I was used to Johannesburg. Yeah. The only issue was when I moved from KZN to Free State. I think I was in grade nine. You're into the girl, you tourist. It's giving tourist. Girl. Shoot. I changed schools like a nobody's business. But why all these provinces so, instead of just being in the same province? Yeah, when my granny retired, um, she wanted to move to a farm in okay. the state. So she was like, I'm going to move to Quiet Quiet. I need a quiet place. I don't mm. know why she thought Quiet Quiet was quiet. But yeah. <laughs> I need a quiet place. And then, because um, I grew up with my granny, mm-hmm. I had to move with her. I couldn't yeah. stay behind. So then I moved with her and I had to find a school that side. And then, yeah finished my matric in the free state at okay. Kwa, and then after matric moved to Johannesburg for school so I'm sure you're very like well cultured the fact that you've experienced all of these places all these people I'm sure just diversity all around yes different languages mm. I'm very multilingual also because of the 
the constant mm. moving around yeah. yeah oh that's lovely and i know you mention your mom and sister a lot mm-hmm. i've watched different segments and interviews and are those like your strongest supporters like your strongest you know biggest yeah. supporters mm. my little sister loves everything i do like i'm her role model i can see it in her eyes that this one looks up to me so i try by all means to like you know make her and my mom proud Mm. because they've always been there um so that's why i i love them i mean mean, it's family yeah it's family yeah but like i really love them those are my people and i'd literally do anything for them Mm. yeah and then I want to touch on your father figures. Yeah. Like, do you have any father figures in your life? Um. So my dad died when I was like two. Mm. So I don't really know him like yeah. that. And then I have an uncle. He stays here in Johannesburg, but I yeah. don't really see him quite a lot. But when I was young, I used to see him a lot. Mm. But I don't think me not having a dad affected me. I was actually going to touch on that. Do you think that, you know... <laughs> It has affected maybe like your relationships, your romantic relationships, or how you view men, mm. or what you look for in a partner because you didn't necessarily have that yeah. figure in your life. No, I really, I'm not. I, it didn't affect yeah. me in any way because I barely knew the guy. So, but I know stories about him. Yeah, like he was a very good man apparently, and him and I were gonna get along. Mm. I think that's the only thing I wish. I wish he was still alive. Because yeah, I just want to see. Hear these stories. Yes, I just want to see how him and I were gonna vibe. Mm. But like, I wouldn't say him not being there affected me yeah. in a negative way. Because yeah. also I had uncles mm. and I had, you know, male cousins that were much older than yeah. me. So I do know, I did have like a male figure, figure in my in life. Even life. though it wasn't my dad, but like I still had like male people around me that really cared for me oh no that's amazing because i know a lot of people grow up with this void you know and they yes. end up like resorting to romantic relationships to fill that void mm-hmm. meeting different men and all of that using substances so yeah. it's, it's amazing that your family was able to fulfill that and you didn't feel a void that's yeah, amazing exactly. so now to get into your hobbies i read your bio and you mentioned that if you're not gracing our screens creating content doing the most you like to explore different adventures mm. so how would you define that like what is your favorite thing to do I love traveling. Mm. Yes, I Girl, love. I saw Zanzibar vibes. I was like, oh, she is in her travel bag. Period. Love I love it. traveling. Mm. Um, now I'm looking into traveling out of the country because mm. I used to do Boma, your Cape Town. Your, every December I'd go to Cape Town because I love living in Chinese, I love seeing other places, yeah. you know, exploring. Uh, so this year I decided, let me just go to Zanzibar, you know. And I was like, you know what? Every year, I have to make sure that yeah, I international country. trip. That's yeah. amazing. And how do you think traveling impacts you as an individual? Do you feel like it broadens your horizons in any way? Like, how does it impact you? It really does. Um, also, you learn a lot. Yeah, you learn about different currencies. Mm. Um, because okay, I knew that they use shillings in Zanzibar, yeah. but I didn't really know how it and equates yes. yeah so you get to learn that and also you learn different cultures and the history of zanzibar also it really shook me mm. um i learned a lot about that place so you get to know a lot about different places and how they do things there and you know when it comes to their culture food language yeah. and just how they live on a daily basis oh that's amazing mm. all right girls so labona <laughs> gazlim one more Modi Big Brother, Modi TV, Modi Podcast. Nice, I'm seeing her live. But when I live, guys, her skin. This is no makeup. Nothing. Nothing crazy. She just uses Dove. This is her. This is the real. It's crazy. Like you, Mona, face to face. So I want to get into sexuality. Right? Yeah. So society obviously believes that sexuality is a spectrum. You can't box it to a specific mm. class or a category. Right? And I did... Watch your Q&A on YouTube. <laughs> and I, I heard there that you are into women, right? So men and women, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So what age did you discover that? And is it something that you believe was a phase? Or is that like part of your identity? Um, okay, so I discovered it in high school. Mm. At first, I thought it was a phase. But... I mean, like, as I grow up, I do look at some girls and I'm just like, Ooh, mm, girl. Uh-oh. You know? <laughs> so I yeah. also I've dated a girl before. So that's when I saw good, it's actually not a phase. So yeah. I am by, I'm into both girls and guys. Okay. Mm. 
And does your family know about that? Um, I'm sure they know, yeah. Manje, because I used to talk about it a lot on the show. So, and I also was kissing girls on the show. So. Really? <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sure they know. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, but I'm, it's, I'm, yeah. It's not something like, it's like, I'm only, coming out. Yes, mm. I've only done that with my friends mm. because they were, you know, starting to ask questions. I'm like, Ish, yeah, guys, this is what's happening, you know. Mm. Yeah, because I was dating a girl at that time. Yeah. All right, then I actually want to get into that, but we'll get into it. We're going to ask about the big brother questions. Okay. So I'm going to ask you about your career. Okay. So I saw you guys got crowned, announced, chosen as Mzansi Magic Ambassadors. Yeah. That was crazy. Pretty, not just Mzansi Magic Channel, Mzansi Purr. Magic, Mzansi Way to and Emnet. Let's go. Four channels. Let's go. So what does that mean? Like, does it mean that, you know, just give us more depth into that. Okay, so for them, it's a thing of they chose people that they feel like they are suitable to be ambassadors for their channels. Mm. You know, maybe if your brand kind of aligns with what they are trying to put out there mm. and if you're an active person on on the socials. Mm. So we basically promote shows that are coming out, oh. attend events that any events that they'll be hosting for example, you know, um there's going to be a premiere um Queen of Judges. Yes. So we might be attending that yeah. and also we have to push um the shows, you know, just be the face of pretty the channel. much yeah. just be an ambassador yes and i want to know and i'm sure they also want to know are you guys getting paid for that of course please. period please. we have to <laughs> please we, have to get paid, but we are getting yeah. paid guys and when i say we're getting paid we're getting paid, we're getting paid. <laughs> money for zanzibar paid please we're Let's getting paid the hustle. actually to touch on that people actually look down on content creation as a career, mm-hmm. you know, as a profession. They, when people think profession, they think doctor, lawyer. Office. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Nine to five, yes. hustle, grinding. And it's like, I could literally take one picture and make your whole salary. Dog, that's what I went through when I came out the show. When mm. when I came out, I started seeing people saying, ah, content creation, content creation is not yeah. a job. Um, if talentless, what do I mm. do? And I'm like, I need people to sit down and, you know, read and try to find out new things about content creation because Mm. content creation can actually take you far you don't you know how much brands are willing to pay just for you to post about them do you understand what i'm saying and the thing is content creation more than anything is part of advertising and marketing it is i just think that you're able to do it out of the comfort of your home and with more creativity you have more creative freedom they can just give you a brief but you have creative freedom unlike working in an office where you studied marketing and you're the one typing the brief and you're sending it to me exactly so i think it goes hand in hand i just make a video put it out there i get paid exactly so you would definitely say like in your experience it's been working it's been working yeah. and it's still gonna work i don't think it's gonna die anytime soon because companies do need mm. content creators to put their businesses out there 100 percent. yeah okay how does your family feel about that because i know that you also yeah. have a degree touch more on that as well oh my gosh so i d- it's a diploma by the way yeah. in transportation management school like a school, <laughs> then a school. we're not gonna look down on whether <laughs> So I studied um, air transportation management at UJ. Yeah. Initially, I didn't even want to study that. I yeah. wanted to do law. Ish, my sister. But, you know, when you apply late, yeah, and you know, rush, just... rush, they tell you there's no space and you just take whatever is there. Yeah. Because you just want to go to school. And mm. also, for me, more than anything, it was for my family. Yeah. It wasn't even for me. It I get you. Family. So I did that for my family. I was like, okay, now I got the diploma. Here, here it is. And then I'm going to continue with my life. Your passions. Do you think that it's actually wise for students, kids, learners, straight out of matric to be forced to make a decision real quick? Like, go and study this. Or should they be given time to explore and discover what they actually love? Because that's something that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life. Exactly. You know, so what do you think should be the way I forward really for that? parents should be more understanding yeah. when it comes to, you know, um, pursuing your passions. Because mm. look at me now, I have a diploma that I'm not even using. I'm mm. not even planning on using it. So we wasted money, 100%. basically. You understand? So I had maybe had i 
taken some time yeah. to sit and maybe think, oh, see, maybe this is what I want to do. Maybe we could have invested in that thing, mm. content creation, because I've always wanted to be a content creator. Okay. We could have maybe invested in that rather than investing and in paying tuition fees. Mm. School is expensive, guys. Yeah, you know, so I feel like it is a waste and parents should be more understanding and listen to their kids when they say, can I just think about it or I don't want to do this. Can I rather do this? And mm. I feel like they should be more supportive when it comes to such things, because yeah. this is something I'll be doing for the rest of my life. 100%. And if I do not like it, that means I'll be depressed. You'll never be time. happy. I'll never be happy. Yeah. I think yeah. also like we need to give black parents in particular a bit of grace because obviously like they come from a generation where yeah they didn't have the the privilege, you know, to be able to study. And it's sad that Mm. education has become a privilege instead of something that is offered so easily because it's part of your development, you know? So it sucks that, you know, they don't understand because also like we live in a very progressive society. Mm. Things are moving very quickly. Mm. We have resources to do whatever. I can post a TikTok, like I said, and make 10K from one video. You understand? So I feel like they don't understand that. And for them, they equate success to education. Also, you know, our first black president was Yay. like, the key to success Yay. is education. Isn't there another key? Isn't there another key to success, like, Banza? So obviously, like now they have that belief yeah, that, you know, true. this is the way. So I think it's just a matter of having those conversations, like communication, said. sit yeah. down and talk, like let's understand each other, mm. listen to what I have to say. Mm. Let's, you know, discuss it and uh, discuss it and see if it would really work. Exactly. Exactly, 100%. So now it's time for the big brother segment, baby girl. Last girl standing. Like, what are you even me? What are you talking about? <laughs> Last girl standing. Girl, do you know what that means? Girl. Second runner up, right? Yes. That was number three, yes. That's crazy. Did you think yeah. you'd make it that far? Like, Actually, you know what's crazy, me? I really, not that I was doubting myself, yeah. but obviously when you're in that situation, you look at the people you're with, mm. you look at how they act inside the house, because you don't know how people What's are happening? receiving them from outside. So you look at how other people inside the house are receiving them, so you you kind of like, maybe it's the same, mm. it's the same thing mm. outside. Gandhi, total Mix. opposite. The people you thought would stay, gone. No. Nope. Eh. Nope. Because, I mean, I'm not going to lie and act like I didn't know that most people in the house didn't really like me. Yeah. So I took it as, Ish, what if it's like that? The viewers. Mm, I get you. So I didn't think I'd make it too. I think when I saw good actually, maybe I'm a big deal, was when I made it to the top six. I was like, maybe I, I, I am a big maybe deal. Maybe I am that girl. Maybe I'm a big deal. Yeah. You know? But like, yeah, so I was looking at the people I was with in the top six. I was like, oh, it's We've tough. Come a long way. It's really tough. Yeah. So did you get into the house with a specific strategy? Did you know how you were going to play the game? Or were you just freestyling? Um, I really didn't have a strategy going into the house. Yeah. I only developed a strategy when my like first week. Mm. So what I there's a pattern. Yeah. Second week, actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's a pattern I noticed. When you win head of house or when people feel like you're very strong in the arena, you are automatically you're going to be up the following week. They're mm. going to put you up. So I avoided being up the whole time yeah. because I really didn't want to strain people outside Guti every week. Or that they voted, only to find out so Guti, that's what the people wanted outside. But to prove yeah. Guti, we are the dominators. Yeah. Obviously, we don't know that because we're inside the yeah. house. So I told myself, Guti, when I get to the arena... I must make sure, Guti, I do not even make myself a target because Mm. I felt like I was already one inside the house. So I was like, in the arena, I'm going to, I'm not going to be lazy, but I'm also not going to push too hard. Mm. Because if you notice, I only started going hard hard towards the end. Yeah. Towards the end. Because I felt like I needed it because I needed to make sure, Guti, okay, now I need to stay inside Mm. the house. But obviously, my strategy wasn't you know like anything in particular yeah yeah like it wasn't it didn't i wouldn't say it didn't work Mm. but also it wasn't necessary but i didn't know that because you you can't see what's outside you just go with what you feel at that time Mm. so yeah that that could be a pro and a con but i actually want to touch on the fact that you mentioned that you felt like there was a bit of resistance you felt like some people maybe didn't like you so what made you feel that way like what 
behavior did you notice um um, he can see yeah yeah and things that people say about you Mm. the way that people treat you Mm. um we had bullies in that house okay but i'm just one person that doesn't give attention to such things Mm. i mind my own business if you want to be nasty to me you're gonna do that's on you i don't have time i know i am here and i'm gonna focus on on the reason why 100 not on you so if you want to be mean to me you want to be doing weird things that's on you that's on you mama I love that. Yeah. So would you say you formed any relationships in the house that you feel like, ah, these ones, my boys. Listen, I did. Mm. I did. Yo, I did. I formed some really incredible relationships in the house. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for them because coming out the house, there's so much hate. I remember mm. there was a time when Kosi came inside the house. She was like, guys, you need to stick together, yeah. love each other because there's more hate outside. Ooh. So... When we got outside, those are the people that kind of helped yeah. me get it together yeah. and, you know, keep focusing and pushing. So what would you say was the number one form of hate that you received coming out of, of the house? Okay, so um, the fact that I'm pretty, but I'm dumb. Be for I'm real. just a pretty face. Be for real. Damn. First of all, thank you for saying I'm pretty. Yeah, let's start there. Thank you very much. <laughs> And that's literally the only thing they can say about me because they have nothing else to come at me for. Clean record. That the records don't dumb. lie. Like, we know that line. It's been there for years and mm. years. And it's boring. Like, like, be creative. Come up with something new. Yeah. You know? So how do you combat that? Like, do you ever, like, respond? Or do you just... Yo, I don't know, guys. I mean, I, yo, I'm different. I'm built different. Hey, mm. I'm so unbothered. Nonchalant. Like, I am so unbothered. Hey? Like, especially if I know that you make things up just yeah. to make me feel a certain way. Like, mm. I'm really unbothered. I mean, when I have time and I'm just chilling at home, I do be throwing jabs here and there. But, like... It's not that serious. It's not that serious. Mm. It's really not that deep. Because I'm... I don't know, man. Are you I don't unbothered? even know how I do it. Are you unbothered because you feel nothing? Or are you unbothered, unbothered because you know you have a community of armies <laughs> that are going to come for us if we say one thing about you? <laughs> I'm Does that like help you? I'm unbothered because I feel nothing. Yeah. Because even before going into the house, I did have a huge number on TikTok. Yeah. You know, so you know how TikTok is mm. the comments. Yeah. Ooh. I'd really be unbothered, Vale. Even in the house, even before I knew that I had a big community, mm. people would be doing things, saying things, and I'd just be like, I'd. And carry on with my life because cool I'm story. really mm. like, okay, if I react and then. What's going to happen? Yeah, you know, I get you. So, what did the diary sessions mean for you? Were those like a moment to just pour out your heart? Could you like one hundred percent be yourself, mm. or did you feel like you held back some things just to play the game? So, for me, ne, because I'm one person that struggles with expressing themselves, mm-hmm. um, diary sessions did really, you know, change that a bit. But then it also didn't help because I knew Gucci. I'm in the diary ne, with Big Brother, but yeah. I know the world is watching. Yeah. So sometimes I'd hold back. Yeah. I'd say some things, but I wouldn't say some things because I'm like, but the whole world is watching. Yeah. So I know it's diary sessions. It seems like it's just Big Brother and I, but at the same time, I'm just like, Ugh. still need to remember where you are. Yeah, you know, so I'll be like, okay this is nice because i get to tell big brother some of the things that i can't even talk to the housemates about but also in the under the same breath i might be judged outside Mm, you know because the world is watching Mm. i want to ask you something a bit not really controversial but like just it was spicy your relationship with young puppy what was happening there was it like (laughs) frenchie Guys, we, we were friends. Yeah. We were friends. Also, you must remember, guys, we're in a confined space mm. 24-7 with the same people. Mm. Um, You get bored sometimes. Yeah. And also, you just also need... He understood me. Yeah. We understood each other. So, it was so easy for me to gravitate... It was for, so easy for us to gravitate towards, towards each, each other, other. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, it was nothing serious, hey? Mm. All right, babe. And then are you... Still cool with Sanaya? That's my dog. That's your boy. That's my boy. Is that your boy or your boy? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, My sister, that love. (laughs) Uh -uh. Ole. 
guys, do you feel like you're a very calculated person? Because like you mentioned now in your diary sessions, you held back some things. And you know, people can't pretend for long. You know that you're in mm. this game. You know mm-hmm. that you are being watched. But at some point, the cracks always show. So do you think that you're yeah. always calculated? I wouldn't say always calculated, but I'm... I think before I act. Mm. I'm someone that thinks about consequences before I actually say something or do something. Yeah. I don't know if I, I could label that as being calculated. Yeah. But like, I'm very careful. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's lovely. And then I wanted to actually touch on your supporters. Yeah. How does <gasps> all the love make you feel? Like it goes crazy. And I want you to list, you know, the generosity that you receive from them. Like that is, it's been crazy. Hi, Dominators. It's the mother here. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. run that back. Do that again. Do that again. Do that again. <laughs> Hi, Dominators. It's the mother. The one and only mother. <laughs> pa, po, 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 you see those people? Uh, yeah. They are holding yeah. you down. Those people held me down even during the show. Bro. You know when they say, when I came out, my friends started showing me because they Dude. took screenshots mm. that every week you were being dragged. And these people Army. made sure that they came guns, guns blazing. Yeah. And I'm like, guys, what is going on? You know when they say someone is going to stand by you through thick and thin. Till death to us, part Leo. It's the dominators, guys. Mm. It's the dominators. Not only that, but also um, because, you know, we in that house for three months. Yeah. No income. Mm. We're not working again. Mm. So for them, it was a thing of, Uguzi, let us help Uzin oh. get her life back on track. Girl. You know, Sharp, they got me, because they knew the Guta wanted to be a content creator. They got yeah. me a full set of vlogging kit, studio lights, laptop. Crazy. Not just the laptop, MacBook. Go what? <laughs> yes. Hey guys, my next project after hosting the show, Big Brother Way. <laughs> MacBook. And then they gave me a hundred K. That is crazy. And then what else? Um voucher in Basa. And then after a month, they got me an apartment fully paid for tough months. Mama paid me what? Fully furnished and paid for tough months. Guys. This is, I'm so sorry. that This is insane. First and foremost, like, I only thought these things exist abroad. Mm-hmm. It's giving celebrity culture. It's yeah. giving ride or die supporters. Because till this day, how long have you been out of the house? Um, It's been three months. From three, four. But every single day, there's contributions for Z. Listen, Z okay. It's crazy. Girl, I was, I'm still shocked even now. I was shocked because, like I said, I'm a big fan of Big Brother. I watch Big Brother from season one. But I never tapped into the social media space yeah. of Big Brother. So I never knew that these things were happening. Mm. Uguti people can get you a whole apartment fully furnished. Baguni gets about 100K. That I is crazy. I was shocked. I was like, what is going on? But also the reasoning behind why they do that mm. makes so, so much, much sense. sense. Yeah. Mm. I think that goes for everything here. Mm. Like you just need to further educate yourself about the reasoning behind it, yes. the intention behind yes. it, and just get to understand. So how does your family feel when you came out of the house? Was it like what was the vibe? Yeah, you know, my family was so happy, especially because there was actually before I went into the house, there was a divide. Between and my families. Okay. Between my families. <clears throat> And then apparently when I was in the house, I, me going into that show brought them oh, together. That's lovely. I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. It actually, even with my friends, the, with my friends, not necessarily a divide, but this, but like, you know, yeah. but it brought them together. Cause it's like, we gotta cry. To work. Those people had to work. To, there's a lot of work put into <laughs> guys. I think it's just when, living your yeah, best life. I literally thought I'm gonna go in there, but and they they just have to post here. Um, here and there, mm. people were running your account. Girl, there was contributions being run for voting. Hey. There was there was a lot going on. My friends were friends were telling me about. Hey, there's a lot of abbreviations what they were teaching I, me that what I. What I what now you could win if we put you in a political party, you could become the my president. friends. Yes, my friends. Okay, now president. All. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They those people worked and I always tell them I appreciate my friends, guys. Like they held it down for Yo. me. Like they held it down. They would get dragged now or self because mm. I remember there was a time where I was in the bottom three. Yeah. They dragged them on Hick-tick. some. You guys don't love Z. 
why is he why are you guys not doing three? something why, why are you guys doing they got dragged but they never gave up mm. they never gave up that's amazing they held it down till yeah. the end what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned from being in that house um the biggest lesson for me was that anything is possible and mm. your life can change like true this literally that's you true. can sleep tonight to wake up tomorrow your life has changed how has your life changed I was just a normal girl posting TikToks, mm. minding my own business. Next thing, I'm loved by people from different countries Dude. and not, they don't love me because just because I was on a show, mm. but because of the person that I am. Mm. And you know, when someone says, I love your aura, you're just like, you don't even know me. My but aura, it's, like, girl. it's a big deal. Energy. It's really mm. a big deal. So you're very relatable in that essence. Like people are able yes, to relate to you. and that's you. what I love because that's what I've always been standing for. Yeah. I want to be a relatable, like, girly. Yeah. I don't want girls to look at me and be like, yeah, I was in For each, I can't. Uh, yeah, that's too far-fetched um, for I wanna me. I want to be a very relatable girly. That's mm. what I've always pushed, Vela. Even with my brand, that's why I don't like doing too much. Yeah. I like keeping it the Z style. Yeah. Because I really want to be relatable and I want, you know, people to relate to me. Okay, that's a lovely shoe. Girl, you said a lot and that was very, very profound. Thank we had a lovely segment with you. I'm really, really grateful Thank to have you, you on here. Me. You're doing amazing. Your numbers blew up. I don't know how many followers you had before, but now you're like over 200K, right? On Instagram and mm. you're just moving. And I have no doubt in my mind that you're just about to go even further. This was just the beginning. There's so much yeah. more coming. And you know, God's favor is just upon your life and there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do about that. You know, like once you're in your winning season, you're just moving and doors are about to open for you. So what is the next step for you in your career? Well, I just want to dominate, man. Dominate more spaces. Yeah. Work with all my dream brands, mm. um, working towards that. Mm. And also... I am planning on um, opening a wig line and a salon. But Girl. It's kind of taking time. Mm. But I'm still going to turn to Jackie's in. 100%. Slowly but surely. Because I'm such a wig girly. Mm. So that's what I'm trying to work towards mm. now. So yeah. I'm sure you already know, Hori. Before you even launch. Listen, People, I already have customers. Listen, I am there. I am. Put me first in line. Go <laughs> back. The way that that hair is laid, I want it like that. Please, I don't want, I don't don't want problems. Worry. I don't want problems. But yeah, girl, thank you so much. Do you have any final words for your dominators um, and for the rest of the community? They know. You guys know. Always. Always. Even the Zinaya people. <laughs> Love you, love. <laughs> well, eh, eh. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It's your girl, Oceans Grey. You can catch me on Instagram, TikTok, all of that. And you can find my girl. Um, Instagram, underscore Zintlezi, underscore TikTok. It's Z Mufuking. Twitter, it's Mufuking Zintle. Thank you very, very much. We'll catch you next week. Mwah.